Geochemistry is the core and blood of your real estate. Suppose you are visiting your doctor for your annual checkup. One of the first things they do is order blood tests. These tests reveal vital information about your health, like nutrient levels, potential infections, or signs of chronic conditions, all before you might notice any symptoms. With that information, your doctor makes more informed decisions, recommends treatments, or advises lifestyle changes. Now, apply that same idea to real estate. Think of geochemical testing as the blood test of a property. Instead of red blood cells and white blood cells, we are looking at soil chemistry, mineral content, and water quality. Just as blood work detects hidden imbalances or vulnerabilities, geochemical tests identify everything from nutrient deficiencies and contaminants to valuable minerals or stability issues. These insights help you pinpoint potential problems, like expansive clays or heavy metals, well before they compromise your investment or project. Just as a doctor uses blood test results to tailor a patient's treatment plan, geochemical data guides you in making the right decisions about your real estate or potential real estate. You can decide whether to call for much more in-depth research from an environmental company, or maybe purchase an agricultural property based on its previously unseen or untested excellent soil qualities. Or perhaps reconsider the purchase of a commercial property based on its expansive clays. Maybe the field you have been farming is better used for gravel quarries with secondary rare earth element production. Without that crucial diagnostic information, you are essentially guessing, which can lead to costly mistakes or missed opportunities. In both scenarios, whether it's a doctor running a blood panel or a geologist analyzing soil test results, the core principle remains the same. Knowledge leads to better outcomes. By identifying issues early, you prevent minor concerns from becoming major obstacles protect your long-term interests, and ensure that all decisions are rooted in reliable, science-based data. Thanks, Michael. Welcome to Magna Geological. My name is Bud Johnson, and I am a Texas-licensed geoscientist and principal at Magna Geological. In this video, we will introduce you to our testing and test evaluation services. By conducting geochemical tests, we can gain critical insights into the composition, behavior, and interactions of your natural materials, insights that are essential for informed decision making, and to strive for the best use and sustainable management of the real estate resources. Prior to testing, we can first provide a brief financial opportunity and risk-oriented geological summary of a property. After that assessment, perhaps no testing is recommended or required. Our tests are provided as needed and at as close to a cost basis as possible. We are geologists, not a laboratory. We have designed an evaluation system through multiple labs and multiple tests to provide an overall analysis of a property. The primary reason to test is to find out what is there. Just like the doctor sends you to the lab to draw blood, so too do we look at the geochemistry and mineralogy for insights into the property. A simple example is expanding clays. Expanding clays cause all sorts of problems for house foundations, or do they? Perhaps the expanding clays are uniform across the property, but the soil moisture content is not uniform. Really, it is the variation in moisture content, not the clay that is causing the problems. How will that information impact your decision making? Three of the primary reasons for conducting geochemical testing of rock, soil, and water include mineral exploration, material suitability with risk analysis, and assessments of soil and water health. First, for mineral exploration, the goal is to identify and quantify economically valuable minerals and ores in rocks, soil, and water. Next, material suitability and risk analysis may address everything from expansive clays to heavy metal contamination, plus any natural or introduced organics or inorganic compounds. And third, soil and water health testing assesses nutrient levels, pH, organic matter content, and other factors that might affect vegetation growth, such as how well a soil might support a lawn, golf course, or organic garden or in a more rural setting, how will it work for a cattle rotation program or perform in a large arable farm system? With that background, Michael will run through 
some of the specifics of the tests. Thanks, bud. Our soils and rock tests include 70 elements, essentially everything reasonable. Included are alkali metals like lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. Alkali earth metals like beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. Lanthanide rare earth elements including lanthanum, cerium, praseodymium, neodymium, samarium, europium, gadolinium, terbium, dysprosium, holmium, erbium, thulium, and ytterbium. Certain actinides including uranium and thorium. Transition metals including scandium, yttrium, lutetium, titanium, zirconium, hafnium, vanadium, niobium, tantalum, and chromium. Siderophile metals like molybdenum, tungsten, manganese, rhenium, iron, ruthenium, osmium, cobalt, rhodium, iridium, nickel, palladium, platinum, and gold. Chalcophile metals including copper, zinc, cadmium, mercury, gallium, indium, thallium, germanium, tin, lead, arsenic, antimony, bismuth, sulfur, selenium, and tellurium. Anion lithophiles including boron, aluminum, silicon, and phosphorus. Our ionic solubility and water tests include the following major crustal element ions of aluminum, calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, silica, silicon, and sodium. Minor crustal elements of manganese and phosphorus and common trace crustal elements of antimony, arsenic, barium, boron, cadmium, chromium-2+, and hexavalent, cobalt, copper, lead, lithium, molybdenum, nickel, selenium, silver, strontium, thallium, tin, vanadium, and zinc. Common anions include bicarbonate, carbonate, bromide, chloride, fluoride, nitrates, orthophosphates, and sulfates. Organics include semi-volatile organics like herbicides, pesticides, and solvents. Trihalomethanes including solvents and refrigerant and volatile organic compounds like benzene and associated chemicals. Our soil production analysis includes a texture analysis, cation exchange capacity analysis, and the following nutrient analysis. Organics, pH, salts, nitrates, phosphates, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, zinc, iron, manganese, and copper. Finally is the mineral analysis which is practically infinite in its number of possibilities which depend on your soil and included in this is the clay speciation. Clays are extremely important in the workings of your real estate. Many people are aware of expanding clays on foundations, but that is only the tip of the iceberg. Clays control nutrient availability and water availability. They affect workability both in agriculture and construction. They affect water infiltration and erosion. They affect carbon sequestration to bacterial concentration. Clay types and volumes are extremely important. Thanks, Michael. As you can see, the geochemical and geological test data we gather for the property is indeed comprehensive. Now, let's explore how this information integrates into the broader environmental context of your real estate. Allison will now present a more holistic view of the interrelationship between parent rocks soils and water. Thanks, bud. If you have questions or if we can be of assistance, please email us at magnet at magnetgeological.com. To continue the blood flow metaphor, in the rock, soil and water system, gravity is the heart and pump of the system, while streams and rivers, collectively the fluvial system, transport water and soil downstream. Weathering is the term for decomposition of rocks, pedogenesis, is the formation of soils, and sediment, or load, is the term for the same soil material inside the stream bed, within the stream or river. The primary purpose for soil development is to move the parent bedrock material downslope, from mountain top, to seafloor. Weathering decreases the particle size, and increases the surface area, of the rock being weathered. This makes it easier, to transport the rock downslope. At the top of a mountain, there is no soil, there are no streams, only the parent bedrock, and precipitation. The weathering material from the bedrock, along with the precipitation that falls on the mountain, starts a long trip downslope toward the ocean. 
Water and soil are interwoven like braids in hair. If soil has formed on the flank of the stream, then water travels through the soil to get to the stream. If the soil has eroded into the stream, then it becomes part of the stream sediment or stream load. At a course change in the river, a point bar is developed and the sediment is then redeposited on the banks of the stream to once again begin a pedogenic process of forming a soil. This happens over and over in flood plains, and overbank deposits along the flanks of the river. This gravity-driven, intermittent conversion from moisture conveying soil to stream bed load and back to soil again continues the harmonic dance downslope until it reaches the coastal environments. Here, they can form wetlands, marshes and deltas, and the coarser materials are sorted and consolidated into beaches and barrier islands. Beyond the coastline, they may be funneled through submerged canyons by turbidity currents, becoming turbidites or contrarites. Ultimately, they can reach the seafloor and be deposited as seafloor fans. In short, the materials we call soil can travel from mountaintops to the seafloor, intermittently changing between soil and sediment load. There are three types of erosion, physical or mechanical, normally things that are easy to see, think of a bridge washing away in a flood. Second is ionic or chemical weathering, think of a dissolution cavity like casting or dissolution of salts and gypsum evaporites. And third is nutrient depletion from the non-sustainable use of soils. The last two are not so easy to see, but there are many soil qualities that can also help predict the first one. Geochemical testing applies to all of them. In this orchestra of activity, your real estate is impacted by past, present and future activity. On the depositional or introduction side, whatever is upslope, in the parent rocks, soil or water has, or will, land on your real estate, and likewise, what is on your property will likely land downslope. This might be gold and rare earth elements, or it might be herbicides and pesticides. Geochemical testing is the blood test of a property. We are looking at soil chemistry, mineral content, and water quality. Just as blood work detects hidden imbalances or vulnerabilities, geochemical tests identify everything from nutrient deficiencies and contaminants to valuable minerals or stability issues. By recognizing and addressing potential issues early, you can navigate the future with wisdom and prevent small concerns from escalating into significant problems. Remember, knowledge leads to better outcomes. If we can be of assistance, please email magnet at magnetgeological.com. Thanks, Allison. Good presentation. We want to remind you that we are not geotechnical engineers or an environmental service firm. We encourage you to always consult with your engineering firms and other consultants. Finally, your real estate is part of a larger system. It is affected by what is upslope and in turn affects what is downslope. The data you collect may turn out to be invaluable to your decision making, or it may turn out to be only background information. But you never know in an ever-changing world how that background information might become even more valuable in the years to come. Thank you very much for your time and attention. If we can be of assistance, please email magnet at magnetgeological.com.